Hello what culture and welcome to another edition of Ups and Downs of Smackdown where we do run through Smackdown and you know what happens, we give the good bits an up and we give the bad bits a down and today I'm definitely giving a down to the cold I have because colds are always a down. But given as we're only a few days away from Hell in a Cell, you've got to imagine that Smackdown was a fun and exciting show that everybody should watch. Well no that wasn't the case, in fact a lot of it was actually completely missable, but let's go through the show. Smackdown gets an up in the same way that Raw did get an up because everybody on the roster did come out onto the stage and once again had a moment of silence to respect everything that's happened in Las Vegas recently and again, that kind of stuff is just important. We should be seeing that, so the fact that WWE did it twice, well that's just, I wouldn't say it's good stuff, obviously what happened was terrible, but paying your respects is important a nice up. But then Smackdown itself starts with a massive down because we had an interview segment between Shinsuke Nakamura and then Jinder Mahal came out and it was the same old nonsense and it's getting a down. Now the major problem here was the dialogue Shinsuke was given was ridiculous. Shinsuke Nakamura, the man who has an aura like nobody else and whoops people's ass, actually said sticks and stones won't break my bones like he's 14 and in school. This did eventually lead to Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers coming out and they had a big fight and they had a big schmoz and to be honest it still doesn't feel like a WWE world title program even though we're only a few days away from this actually being a WWE world title program and we're going to see them in a match. I just do not know what WWE is trying to achieve here. Jinder doesn't feel like the champ, Nakamura doesn't feel like the number one contender and it just feels like they're happy to waste all of this for no apparent reason. So I don't get it. I know this was bad, I know it didn't get me excited for their match, and I also know that on Sunday Jinder will probably retain this title, this will be the end for Nakamura in the main event scene, and then who knows where we go after that. But I'm not excited about it, and I don't really care. And then we have another down, because we did have a match between Charlotte and Becky versus Natalia and Carmella. Well, I guess it was alright. Well, at the same time, it kind of sucked, so it's getting it down. Now the main things I didn't like here were 1. James Ellsworth was tied to the ring post with a leash again, I'm sorry, it just makes me uncomfortable because it's really, 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 really weird. And number two, Natalia did win when she made Charlotte tap out. Now this may just be me being a presumptuous wrestling fan, but because I just saw Natalia, the world champion, make Charlotte, the challenger for said championship, tap out only five days before Hell in a Cell, well that to me says that Charlotte is going to win at the pay-per-view and I'm alright with that. I think Charlotte deserves that title and I wouldn't even be against Carmella cashing in. However, the foreshadowing here is too much. And we may get to Monday and I'm proven wrong and I have to look at myself in the mirror and go, well that was stupid and WWE kind of tricked me but at this moment, well, just didn't like it. And can you believe it, we're going to throw another down out there because then Bobby Roode did take on the returning Mike Kanellis who for my money, if I remember, we haven't seen in about 72 years and guess what? Bobby Roode beat him in 55 seconds. That's a down. Now I get we're trying to push Bobby Roode at the moment and that's the whole point, but why has Mike Kanellis just been off TV for ages only to come back and lose this quickly? Why did you hire him to begin with? You've got loads of jobbers in the back, get one of them and maybe before you reintroduce Mike Kanellis, do something cool with him. This whole segment then took an even bigger nosedive where Dolph Ziggler came out and literally Ziggler and Roode argued about entrances. That's what their feud's about. Their feud is about Ziggler thinks Roode has a stupid entrance and Roode's like, well, I think my entrance is pretty good. And you know what? I think you've got a stupid entrance. Let's have a fight. We are going to give a quick up to the fact that at one point, Bobby Roode did call upon his entrance on cue. Like he just made a sign with his hands and his music started and the lights went out. That was pretty good. But otherwise, I don't care about this either. Meaning right now, Smackdown is just a big show I don't care about. I will give an up to the promo between the New Day and the Usos because while it was by the numbers, it still built up their Hell in the Cell match. And you know that come Hell in the Cell, the pay-per-view, this will probably be the best thing on the whole show. The two teams have intensity, the two teams have fire, and while this really does need to be the blow-off match, I am excited about this. I want to see what's going to happen. This just feels like a real rivalry and I like that. We'll see what happens, but yeah, this... This was alright. We go back into the downs though because even though seven days ago WWE went out of their way to tell me the Fashion Files will be back next week, it was moved again. It was moved to the pay-per-view and Byron Saxon even told us on commentary, ha <laughs> ha, sorry about that, it's now on the pay-per-view. Now if this was the plan or you were never sure that you were going to put it on Smackdown, don't talk about it and don't mention it because now the whole Fashion Files segment is becoming ridiculous. Remember when they were going to reveal it all at Battleground, whatever it was, and they didn't? 
Learn from the past, WWE. Learn from your mistakes and stop taking me on some weird roller coaster ride that never ends. Second roller coasters. They keep on coming too, because it's another down when we did see Ty Dillinger beat Baron Corbin. So yeah, it's a down. Now I guess the match was okay, but then Dillinger won with a roll up out of nowhere. AJ Styles came on the screen and he wound up Big Baron like, ha ha, you lost to Dillinger, and you lost to John Cena, and you lost your briefcase. You basically suck. And the whole thing was ridiculous. One of two things is now gonna happen at the pay-per-view. One, Baron Corbin loses again, and that's just the end of him as a character. He can't do anything, he loses to everybody, and even in his pursuit of the US title, he failed. Or two, he beats AJ Styles to win the US Championship, and what does that make AJ Styles look like? He couldn't even beat the guy that lost his money in the bank briefcase and lost to Ty Dillinger. That ruined AJ Styles, and we shouldn't be ruining AJ Styles given that really he should be in the main event scene and he should be world champion. That's my major worry here. I actually think Baron Corbin is going to win and we've treated him like such a joke for so many weeks. Again, it's only going to hurt AJ. Madness. I will give an up to Aiden English versus Randy Orton though because while it is a shame that English is kind of being used as a pawn in all of this, I mean Orton beat him in about, I don't know, two seconds. It didn't last very long. Rusev is amazing. Rusev makes me happy. Rusev gets an up. Before the match, Rusev cut another amazing promo where he said he was now going to make Sunday Rusev Day, and the next day would also be Rusev Day, because Randy Orton's going to lose the match, and then Randy Orton's going to have to deal with the fallout from the match. And then after his match with Aiden English, Rusev went to attack Orton. Orton caught him. They had a stare down. Now we're ready for their match at Hell in a Cell. It's all pretty simple stuff, but again, Rusev is so entertaining, he can get away with it. And I love this segment. It made me happy. It made me smile. I really don't want Randy Orton to win because finally Rusev feels like he's got momentum again. That means, that means Rusev's going to lose. Thankfully though, the closing segment of SmackDown this week was really good. Obviously it featured Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. And obviously, because I've just said all of that, it's going to get an up. It was kind of standard stuff with Shane McMahon coming out and goading Kevin Owens and calling him a coward. And Shane McMahon went to look for Kevin Owens who proceeded to beat the wazoo out of him. He threw him into a merchandise table and just powerbombed him everywhere and headbutt him too, because that's Kevin Owens' thing now. And when that was all said and done, Kevin Owens came to the ring and he started like saying, oh Shane, you're an idiot. But then Shane re-emerged and basically, the, the short version of all of this, is no matter how much Kevin Owens beat Shane McMahon down, he kept getting back to his feet. You can't really criticize this. It's kind of cool and the fans loved this. During this fracas too, it was also announced that the Hell in a Cell match is going to be Fool's Count Anywhere, but only inside the cells. So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going to happen. Shane McMahon is going to do something stupid. And that is also one of the most dumbest stipulations I've ever heard. Because when you take a step back and you take it out of context, it doesn't make any sense. This was good though. It did get me excited about their match on Sunday. And from everything I took away, I actually think this is going to be in the main event spot. And let's hope it is because it is going to be better than Jinder versus Nakamura. Overall though, this wasn't a very good go-home show considering we are going into a pay-per-view. But however, the whole Kevin Owens, Shane McMahon stuff is exciting. It did save everything. And while you may not have liked the fact that a McMahon is feuding with Kevin Owens, it has made Kevin Owens feel like a much bigger deal. Let's just hope he wins, please win, and come out the other side as a bigger deal. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's SmackDown. Like, share, and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com and read some ups and downs articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. My voice has dropped down about 82 octaves. I can't do anything about that. That's health for you. Make sure you take vitamin C and wrap up warm. I don't know.